Hello everyone, it's been a while since I posted a new video on my YouTube channel. Lately, I've received numerous questions like, do I offer painting lessons for beginners? I've also heard many stories about the challenges beginners face when starting to paint with acrylics. Rather than guiding you through individual paintings and specific topics. Like the painting I'm holding right here. I'll be launching a new painting tutorial series tailored for those unfamiliar with acrylic painting. This new series will encompass around 30 lessons, developed and refined by me and my team, drawing from our long-standing experience in painting. The series will feature concise, basic lessons lasting about 10 minutes, making it easier for beginners to grasp the fundamentals. Firstly, I'd like to introduce my fundamental brush set that I frequently use. This brush set consists of a total of seven brushes, each with a unique purpose and utility. And each brush is chosen based on my experience with acrylic painting. Do you often see the brush I'm holding right now? Yes, the brush I'm holding is called a filbert brush. The bristle head of this filbert brush has a curved shape resembling the letter C. It's perfect for painting trees, foliage, and intricate details in a painting. Next, I'll demonstrate how to create a tree using the filbert brush. First, I'll load a number 6 bristle filbert brush with sap green to underpaint the tree canopy. I'll keep it simple for this demonstration. Next, I'll load a small amount of yellow green onto the tip of a number 6 filbert brush and paint the next layer. Using a dabbing technique, I'll vary the angles and pressures of my filbert brush to paint leaves. I'll add touches of yellow and light green to create bright leaf highlights. Apart from using this brush for trees, you can also use it to create underpainting for grassy patches, fields, or even mountains. This brush is an indispensable tool for me, and many others too. Moving on, let me introduce the detail flat brush. This brush is perfect for capturing small details, such as tree branches, houses, power poles. I'll demonstrate how to paint a few tree branches using this brush. I'm using some burnt umber to paint these tree branches in the most natural way. Since this is a materials focused video, I'll keep it simple so you can understand the purpose of this brush. Next, you can also use this brush to paint tree trunks, for instance. Note that my wrist will rotate to create branches of different sizes and directions. You can also use it to paint a fence in this position with the detail flat brush. Some of you might wonder if the detail flat brush can paint leaves. Absolutely. It's great at painting leaves. I'll paint autumn leaves with warm hues on this tree. When I use a detail flat to make leaves, I roll the brush against my middle finger so the strokes go on the canvas at different angles. This technique keeps your leaves from looking like polka dots because the rotation of the brush puts the bristles in a different direction each time. Begin to tap in highlights on tree with yellow. Don't lose all of the base coat. You still want to see some of the dark foliage. Most of the highlight is placed on the foliage toward the upper left. The next brush is called the liner brush. It's commonly used for fine lines, details, and delicate strokes. Its long, thin bristles make it ideal for creating intricate designs, outlines, and linear elements in your artwork. Now, I'll use this brush to paint the rope of a swing. While a liner brush is often associated with creating fine lines and details, it can also be employed to create grasses.
Load the brush with a mixture of green paint. Lightly touch the canvas with the tip of the brush and then lift it off quickly. This should create grass. Tap in the small cobalt blue flowers with the liner brush. Next up is the fan brush. It's versatile, capable of creating effects like grass, leaves, waves, and even flowers. Now, I'll demonstrate how to create a patch of grass using the fan brush. I'm using sap green to lay down the base coat. Use the corner of the foliage fan brush to place highlights on the foliage with a mixture of lemon yellow and light green. Next, I'll paint a shrub using the fan brush. Scrub on a dark area of background foliage with a mixture of sap green and burnt umber. Load the corner of the foliage fan brush and flip it so the paint is on top. Start the highlight just outside the dark base coat color. Add a few limbs to the trees using the liner brush. I'll add some grassy background under the tree using the fan brush. The fan brush is versatile in acrylic painting. It's great for natural elements like grass and leaves. It offers control and creativity for dynamic effects in your artwork. Next, I'll introduce the synthetic wide flat brush. This brush is quite useful in acrylic painting. It's excellent for covering large areas quickly and smoothly. It works well for backgrounds, skies, and broad strokes. The synthetic bristles are resilient and maintain their shape, making it easier to achieve even and consistent paint application. I'll demonstrate painting a sky in this area using ultramarine blue and white for the sky's base coat. It's fantastic for covering large areas with smooth, even strokes. This brush type is excellent for backgrounds. It's a valuable tool for achieving broad coverage and creating a solid foundation in your acrylic artwork. Next, I'll use the Filbert brush to paint some white clouds in the blue sky. Moving on, this brush is called the Flat White Hog Bristle Brush. It's excellent for painting grasses. Its coarse bristles help create the natural texture and randomness of grass blades. This brush is perfect for achieving a realistic and organic look when depicting grassy areas in your acrylic artwork. This brush is a valuable tool for bringing vibrant and lifelike grasses. And finally, let's talk about the sponge. 
Using a sponge for acrylic painting, especially for creating leaves, bushes, and clouds, is a creative approach. It offers a unique texture and can give your artwork an interesting look. I'll shape this sponge to have a rough, scabrous texture. This way, I can create layers of leaves or clouds with a more appealing texture. Next, I'll guide you on painting clouds using this sponge. First, shape the sponge. Then, take an old sponge and dip a corner into white acrylic paint. You can mix in a bit of gray or light blue for a natural look. Hold the sponge up and gently press it onto the canvas where you want your clouds. Using a sponge gives your clouds a unique texture, adding an artistic vibe to your artwork, even if it's not super realistic. So, have fun being creative with your painting. Now, I'll demonstrate creating a layer of leaves using this sponge. First, use a corner of your sponge and dip it into one of your leaf colors. Mix in a couple of shades if you want a natural look. Hold the sponge up straight and gently press the painted corner onto the canvas. That will give you a cluster of leaves. Keep it up. Repeat that dabbing motion all along the branches or tree shape you've got going on. And don't forget to mix up the pressure and angle, that's going to make those leaves look naturally random. Lastly, use the liner brush to add limbs to the tree. For beginners, I suggest starting with more budget-friendly acrylic paints. As you embark on your acrylic painting journey, focus on learning techniques, mastering color mixing, and honing your skills. Costly paints aren't necessary initially. Affordable options can lay a strong foundation for your learning process. I often use paints from the Montmartre brand. They're reasonably priced and, after extensive experience, I find them suitable for newcomers to painting. This isn't an endorsement, just a mention of their availability and quality at art shops in my area. Now, I'll display a set of acrylic colors I frequently use to give you a clearer view of the type of acrylic paint I prefer. These paints strike a great balance between cost-effectiveness and quality, making them perfect for those venturing into acrylic painting for the first time. Next, I'd like to showcase the palette knife I commonly use. Beginners can start with a basic and commonly shaped palette knife, like the one I'm demonstrating in this video. I'll guide you through using a palette knife to paint leaves, a fantastic technique for adding texture and depth to your artwork. With gentle strokes at different angles, you can achieve a variety of leaf shapes and sizes. I'll adjust the camera angle to provide a close-up view of how to paint leaves using a palette knife. This technique is especially effective for capturing intricate foliage details. So, feel free to experiment with your palette knife to add a unique dynamic to your acrylic paintings. Start adding highlights to the leaves. Layering different shades and using the knife's edges can bring wonderful dimension and realism. I've got a neat trick for you, especially if you're just starting out. Why not make your own palette knife using stuff you probably already have at home? Grab some cardboard like from an old box, and cut it into the shape of a palette knife. Now, here comes the cool part. Cover it with a piece of clear plastic sheeting. You know, the kind you might have lying around. Here's why it's awesome. When your painting and your palette gets all messy, you can just peel off that plastic sheeting. Boom, fresh surface. And guess what? You can even use the other side of the cardboard as a second palette. It's like getting two for on. Give it a try. When choosing a canvas, opt for primed ones. 
primed canvas provides a smooth surface, better paint adhesion, and vibrant colors. Primed canvas is like a blank canvas that's already prepped with a layer of paint ready goodness. It's like a head start for your masterpiece. The primer not only gives you a smooth surface to work on, but it also helps the paint adhere better. Plus, it prevents the paint from seeping into the fibers, keeping your colors vibrant. You can also purchase mini canvases online or at local stores. They're reasonably priced and suitable for beginners. Besides brushes, canvas, and paints, remember to keep a brush cleaning cloth and water nearby. These seemingly small tools play a significant role in your artistic journey. So, I've provided a detailed overview of art tools and materials for beginners. I hope my instructional video helps you select the right brushes for your needs. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share to support our team. I'll release one to two videos weekly, and this tutorial series is interconnected. If you're a beginner, don't miss any videos in this series. I've pinned the playlist link in the video's description. See you in the next videos.